have not disappointed. Opening set right down to the wire. Stanford needed two set points to close it out. They won it 26-24, but it was right back and forth. Both teams went on 4-1 runs, only to be answered. So as uh, Adriana Fitzmorris out of Overland Park, Kansas, goes back to serve. Nice stop by Fitzmorris. Chris staying over the top of the block again. Boy, the Stanford Cardinal thought that ball was in. Again, you've got to be very judicious with your challenges. It's different than the Olympic Games, Karch. Only three per match, whereas at the Olympic Games, as you well know, two per set. But if you were correct, so you basically had an infinite number, you've really got to pick your spots with these three challenges. And Jonaku down the line, but that ball caught a piece of the antenna. So out of bounds, a rare hitting error for Ijanaku. Let's go back over to Holly. Well, you're speaking of that challenge system, and keep in mind that many of the big conferences had it all year, but Stanford didn't. They've only had the challenge system in about three matches this season. John Dunning said, you know, I'm not really that familiar with it. I hope I don't mess it up. Could talk to some of his reluctance to pull it out right here. It's not a system he's familiar with, but they will all get used to it starting next season. There is John Dunning. Congratulations once again for being selected earlier today at the Coaches Banquet, the 2016 ABCA, American Volleyball Coaches Association, their Coach of the Year. He also won that award in 2001. Just underway here in the second set. Again, best three out of five. Ball set a little bit too low by Seliger Swenson. And then that ball somehow off the top of the tape and down by number four, Paige Tapp. You talked about that low set by Seliger Swenson. She can get the ball into her quick hitters from lots of places along the net, but I'm impressed at how Stanford's blockers are ready so far. Lummer, three woman block that time. Loman, Paige Tapp, along with Alexis Hart, number 19 and white on the outside. And that set got left way inside. You can see Catherine Plummer scrambling to try to get her feet to the ball. Jenna Gray so far having a little trouble with her location when she sets the ball farther. Those she's pretty good at. Getting the ball to Inky Ajanaku high enough to deal with the block, but setting to the sidelines a little more trouble. Did you see how many hands were in front of Ajanaku that time? It Not was enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Whatever it, it was. It was more than two. <laughs> yeah, exactly. She wasn't hitting one on one. No. Eighth kill for Ajanaku. And as Coach McCutcheon said yesterday, we will give her the attention that she that she's due. <laughs> that she's due a lot. <laughs> Good swing over the top of the block. John Dunning off the sideline once again, asking her res his reserves down in the corner. Was there a touch there? Well, I don't think he wants to ask the reserves. You got to ask your own hitter. Your own hitter or somebody covering her is the person who knows best. That's what we've done with the USA team. The hitter knows, can hear and see when it's touched the block. Very tight. We've got your super slow motion look there for you. Ooh. Boy, that's not good enough ball control for Minnesota. they got to be more precise than that. Banyak one-on-one. -on -one. Really good touch on the outside by Minnesota. And ripped down the line by Hart. Alexis Hart has been absolutely superb. We talked about the Stanford freshman. What about Hart? And you can see Stanford leaving her line that time because she's been hitting so much cross court. Making an adjustment, the block did. Hitter makes it a counter adjustment. Well executed by Hart. Here is Shaw, Minnesota. Out uh, quickly here, up 6 3. Nice cover by Hens. Minnesota, a chance to extend. What a block. Given Moretta Lutz at 6 foot 8 time. And she is there to stuff that ball on the outside. That ball also got left a little inside, and Lutz happened to be stuck there, so it made it her job as a blocker much easier. Give you the numbers from the opening set right after this point. Good serve down the line. Libero working on Libero. Minnesota out of system. That ball is dug way too tight. That's an unforced error for Stanford, who out hit Minnesota 320 to 259 in the opening set also outblocked them five to one stanford the number one ranked blocking team in the country statistically at over 3.3 percent fitz morris again nicely done out of the middle 
hatred has not cooled off, Karch. In the current set, they have hitting minus 222, but Minnesota was just a in the test. current set. <laughs> the computer was zero. zero. <laughs> it, was, it was just a test, and you passed. Both teams scrambling. Not very effective on offense in this second set. Block of defense, much better prepared. Will Hyde from well off the net, swung into the cross court. Boy, do you have to hit a quality shot to put the ball down against either of these two outstanding block and defensive teams. Minnesota leading. 8-5, if you're just joining us, Stanford, the number six overall seed, won the opening set 26-24, Minnesota, the number two seed, Nebraska, the number one overall seed for the fifth time, they will take on Texas later tonight. Will Height with her 11th kill, and remember, after a relatively slow start, oh, a joust there between the two setters and Seliger Swenson, would like to certainly have that one back, give the kill to Jenna Gray. See any nerves from Stanford at all? We talked about starting four freshmen. The only ones I see are in both setters being a little, having a little trouble with their location, drifting, the ball's drifting off the net a little or not going wide enough on some of their sets. Holland McKenna, defensive specialist, has mentioned 15 substitutions per team per set. So you're going to see a lot of DSs, as we say, coming in and out of this match. McKenna, part of the depth, along with uh, defensive specialists like Katie Shaw, number three in white for Minnesota. Oh, uh, tip over the top. What a good read by Jenna Gray out of Shawnee, Kansas, the national co-player of the year. A good read by her and a bad read by Minnesota. Watch how quickly. See, she's got one that when that left hand hand shows and the right hand's not up with it, it means she's putting it over. Minnesota can't let that happen. Minnesota taking some out of system swings and Jenna Gray once again roofing Will Hyde on the outside. Did you see how close that set went? That was within about eight inches of the net. That's a mistake on the part of Sam Seliger Swenson. When I mentioned Jenna Gray, the 6'1 freshman and the national co-player of the year, and then of course at the high school level, Tipped up into the block, but you can't get that over Ijanaku. The eighth block now for the Stanford Cardinal. Tied at nine. And timeout called by the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Yesterday and today before the match. And the other thing, Paul, that they needed to do was just if something's going wrong, somebody has to speak up, and they had good practice at that. Things weren't going so great in the start of their practice yesterday, but they cleaned it up. Got a better adjustment to adversity. Quick set to the outside, dunk again by Fitzmorris. And then off the shoulder, still alive. To Will Hyde again, Fitzmorris can't make the dig this time. But Adriana Fitzmorris, you talked about her versatility at six foot six, a middle blocker, had seven digs, staying in to serve and play defense against Wisconsin in the regional finals last week. Here is Will Hyde, as expected, leading the way offensively for Minnesota. Right side, Ajanaku, like all wonderful attackers, Karchis, you well know, using the entire court. And that's important because it doesn't matter how high you are, but if you try to hit it straight down, you bring the block back into play, but she hits that shot very deep into the corner. A, it goes over the block, and B, nobody stands there to defend. Very tough to stop. Quick play on the right side, and a rare unforced error. That ball hit out of bounds. Minnesota, Page Tap, missing that ball just long. Good run here for Stanford. A 5-1 run for Jenna Gray and the Cardinal to retake the lead. 11-10 here in the second. Quick set out of the middle. Haven't seen an awful lot. Molly Lohman, who's mostly in the lineup and known as an outstanding blocker, still hits 368 on the season. That's very high efficiency. She needs some more opportunities. 
Yeah, they have, they've been struggling a little passing, but they would love to get her the ball a lot because she'll only have one blocker in front of her. Oh, there's a freshman error. One That's mistake a, compounded by another, hence with the overpass, and Hart did nothing with that. Yeah, that ball should go to the floor, or you stay on the ground and you play it to your setter and run offense. Tough serve by Plummer. And, and the thing that makes that so tough, Paul, is look at how flat she hits it. It barely crosses the net. It's coming at you and down. Imagine how good she'd be if she actually dumped, jumped. We call it a jump float. She's using a standing float, hitting a serve with no spin, and it's coming at you fast. As you mentioned, both teams really struggling here, at least from the numbers they put up in the opening set here in the second. Until that swing, Minnesota was hitting 0-43 in the second set. And on the season, they were the best in the Big Ten Conference at 293. Hitting efficiency, kills, minus errors, divided by attempts. Two blockers up on Ejonico. And ripped inside by Moretta Lutz. Just one for her first six. Lutz starting to heat it up a little bit. Yeah, Minnesota starting to take some chances now. Watch two blockers jump as hard as they can. First on the play against Ajanaku, and then blocking against Lutz. But they're focusing a ton on Ajanaku. Hard ripping into the crossboard. Excellent swing by the six foot freshman Hart. Wonderful athlete. Played track, played basketball, also a track and field athlete in high school, and she grew up in Independence, Missouri. Much needed kill. That put an end to an 8 3 run for Stanford. Ball left a little bit inside, and Lutz complicates matters by hitting the ball out of bounds. But a net violation. Boy, Stanford's going to get bailed out. A net violation called against Minnesota. Yeah, this set gets left inside. Lutz could get her feet to the ball, but you can see Will Hype landing ball. under the net and her jersey touching the net. Oh, stuff straight down. Fanyak getting in front of tap on the slide. 16-13 lead for Kelsey Humphreys at the Stanford Cardinal. Humphrey's an interesting story. When these lab teams met in the very beginning of the season, she was one of two setters for the Stanford Cardinal. They've gone to 5 1, but now has a big roll. Vanyak again with a block on the outside. Minnesota has a timeout remaining, and they will take it right now. Stanford blocking up a storm here in Columbus, Karch, with 11 to only two stuffs for Minnesota. Stuffs, Plummer with three, Ejonaku with six. Minnesota's got to get out of this rotation. Good tip over the top of the block. Got a piece that time by Wilhite. That was not a great set, though, coming from Seliger Swenson. Low, and Wilhite had to save that. Stanford didn't do a very good job of reading the fact that there was no swing possible. Karch may be one of the surprises. It looks like right now Stanford is winning the serve-receive battle against Minnesota. Good swing over the top of the block to Fitzmorris once again. Well, it's been outstanding. Hitting on the left, hitting in the middle, hitting on the right, helping her team in so many ways. She can play anywhere along the map. But you are right. Stanford winning that serve pass battle. And it's critical for Minnesota to serve tougher and get Stanford more problems offensively. Nice up. Plummer working down the line, this time off of Shaw, but what a good dig in the backcourt. We talked about those substitutions and the value of defensive specialists. That was nicely done by number 14 in Cardinal, 5'7", sophomore, out of Laguna Beach, Holland McKenna. Stanford went on an 8-3 run, now on a 5-1 run to take a 19-14 lead. Another good touch by Gray at the net. Not a very good 
good set to the outside, and that ball off the top of the net and out of bounds. Missed opportunity for the Cardinal. Stanford hitting 278 on the match, 28 of 72, eight errors. And so far, Minnesota at only 167, but zero. Nine kills, nine errors here in the second. Plummer again, nice sting in the backcourt. So just if Minnesota wins this, do not count them out at all. They are completely capable of coming back in this match. Yeah, I know you meant to say if Stanford wins it and Minnesota were to fall down two sets to none. Great point, Karch. I was going to go exactly there going back to that Nebraska match. Stanford leading 24 to 18, set point number one. Remember the Stanford Cardinal. Eighth meeting all time between these two. Stanford has never lost. That ball drifts out of bounds. But still, five set points. If you're just joining us, Stanford, the number six seed over Minnesota, the number two overall seed in the opening set, 26-24. That was back and forth. This set has been Stanford the 
whole way. There is Shaw, the defensive specialist. Good dig by Plummer, right on target, ball still alive. But the play cannot continue in the Stanford Cardinal. Inky and the Ink Ets lighten it up here in Columbus.